What is up there, you guys? It's your boy Frenchie on my channel, Delta Player. I'm thinking about dropping the whole Frenchie act because that was just a name I had, a nickname I had in high school. My last name is French, my first name is Bobby, so I guess I'm going to kind of get out of the teenage years and jump into being an adult. So I'm going to start going by Bobby now. Welcome to my channel, Delta Player. I'm going to be showing you my entire Nintendo 64 cartridge collection. Uh, probably not the boxes or the systems or anything like that because what I typically do is I separate the boxes from the games. Uh, pull them out and display them separately so if i ever want to play them i don't have to worry about damaging the box or anything like that um but we're gonna kick it off here with golden isle 007 made by rareware probably one of the first first person shooters that uh really revolutionized the era this one and uh, perfect dark both made by rareware so i'm not gonna be concentrating this in depth with every single game but for the most part what I'm be doing is just glancing over the games that are bad and then really focusing on uh, the games that were nostalgic, I owned, and uh, were just all around fun. So, GoldenEye 007, we're completely switching genres here with LEGO Racers. This is the only game I can say that I actually was able to buy brand new. I opened the seal, I specifically remember this. Um, it was a great game, at, um, but I mean, it can't compete with a lot of the other racers on the console, so it definitely fell by the wayside to a lot of people's personal opinions. And here is the shovelware, the Madden games. You can never have enough Madden. I think I have the three carts right here. Nope, I just have these two for now, but we'll definitely get to Madden 2002 here shortly. Um, I wish I just had a personal Madden in my entire life where he could just tell me what to do play by play. Good old John. Glover 64 was definitely, like, for whatever reason, this game, they decided an analog stick was going to be, like, good for you running around on a ball. I have no idea what... Um, Nasbro was thinking for this game, but I mean, I thought it was fun as a kid, but nowadays, definitely not so much. To Rock 2, Seeds of Evil, I was scared to death of this game as a kid. I was scared of Jurassic Park, anything with dinosaurs in it, and uh, To Rock 2 is no exception. Just, it was it was terrifying as a child. Um, it was one of the only games I played that was rated M on the system, and uh, it definitely showed at that time. Killer Instinct Gold, I picked this game up by accident in a lot. Had no idea that this game was actually worth a decent amount of money, and by decent I mean like 20 bucks. I mean your average N64 game that's that isn't rare is worth around five to seven dollars, and um, it was kind of cool to see that this one was worth a little bit more. I have no idea why the Killer Instinct uh, franchise was always the same, and uh, this one's no different. Maybe it was just didn't sell as many copies, or I don't know what. So Mario Party, finally we're kicking into like a legitimate franchise here that people can respect. Uh, I had the entire trilogy here. I guess it's what it's called as a trilogy, but. I would have to say that my favorite, uh, even though the Mario Party 3 is the most expensive, uh, Mario Party 2 is by far my favorite. Had the best mini games and uh, just seemed all around the most fun. We're keeping it strong with uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time. I, I mean, this game, I don't know how this game hasn't jumped up in price. I guess it's just because there's so many out there, but I mean, this game is so has such a cult following. By far, like, if you were to go up to a 55-year-old woman, she would know what Zelda is. Like, it's, it's almost like a household name. And uh, Ocarina of Time has to be its flagship of, uh, it's like magnum opus of the Zelda franchise. Castlevania. I'm surprised this one uh, wasn't as good as the original Castlevanias. Um, I guess the N64 just couldn't house the hardware that Kon Konami needed, but uh, the PlayStation 1 version of this was definitely better. Um, I'm not a huge Castlevania fan to begin with, but this one was definitely... Not a good game. Top Gear Overdrive, for whatever reason, the N64 had a ton of racing games. Uh, if it wasn't cartoonish, it was definitely tried to be realistic, and those were even worse than the cartoon ones. Not saying that Top Gear was bad, but uh, I just didn't enjoy it as a child. Zelda Majora's Mask. This one was a weird game. I mean, it was just so weird. Um, you can see this is a holographic card. This game kind of scared me as a child, too. I was a just... I don't know what was wrong with me as a kid. I was scared of everything. And uh, video games were no exception. To Rock Dinosaur Hunter, this is the original, and this is my second player's choice uh, game that I have. I believe I showed you another one in here earlier, but I have three total, and I hate them in my collection. Ready to Rumble Boxing, got that for like two bucks from a buddy of mine. Mario Kart 64, finally a good racing game. The, I'd say the first real Mario Kart racing game. The Super Nintendo one shouldn't really count because I don't know why, I just I hated that game. Uh, it was so difficult, and the graphics just could not handle the uh, what the game called for. Um, the only one I can say that would compete with this is Mario Kart Double Dash for the GameCube. We have Quake 2, Buck Bumble, NBA Courtside, and Shadow Man. I just want to kind of fly through the games that no one really cares about. Magical Tetris Challenge. Um, it's kind of cool to have another Tetris title. NBA Blitz, NFL Blitz, uh, NFL Quarterback Club. And we'll clear the way here. I guess we'll spend some time on the Mortal Kombat series. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero and Mortal Kombat Trilogy. So I guess I have a 
trilogy here, but uh, one of the games is specifically named the trilogy. All made by Midway, and uh, definitely a fun fighting game to have in your collection. Now, finally, my probably my most expensive game I own for the system is Conker's Bad Fur Day. I got this for free and a lot from a retired Marine. Um, he decided to just give it to me, so that's awesome. I just played this game recently, and I forgot how much fun and how crude this game is. Just swearing and... I mean, for God's sakes, they put boobs on a sunflower. Like, who would think of that? And it's just so unorthodox for the Nintendo 64. But, I mean, that's why Rareware was so famous, because they never stuck to the script, and uh, they were just such an oddball game company. I just really wish they would come back, and, um, but, I mean, I'm sure half of their hardware developers are dead on a, how can, or on a hotel balcony somewhere, because they just, all the money they made on their games. Just too much cocaine. Hot Wheels Turbo Racing, I loved this game as a kid. I used to run it all the time from Blockbuster, but I never had a memory card to save it, so... Had to keep starting over, but I mean, it's definitely a game you can always come back to. <laughs> I mean, who didn't love Hot Wheels as a kid? Perfect Dark, this is the other FPS shooter that I was talking about that rivaled with uh, 007 GoldenEye, and I, I actually prefer this one over, over Bond. I don't know why I like this game so much more. Maybe it was rated M, um, or maybe it was some other factor, but I loved this game as a kid. I'm starting to get tongue-tied. It's so hard to just keep naming off games and thinking of stuff to say about them. Star Wars Shadow of the Empire, Pokemon Stadium, I actually liked this more than its sequel. Tony Hawk Pro Stater 2, played that a bunch as a kid, 007, Pokemon Snap, that was a really fun game, and Tony Hawk Pro Skater the original. I have so much shovelware on this on this system, Final Fight Destiny, Helmet's Number Journey, Cruising USA, and Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. This game was fun, the uh, other three not so much. Knockout the Kings 2000, that one's really cool, you got Muhammad Ali chilling on the front. Pokemon Puzzle League, always nice to have an extra... Uh, Pokemon title in the your collection. Toy Story 2, Paperboy. It's just like I have so much, so many bad games on this, on this, uh, in my collection. Speaking of bad games, I have Quest 64, horrible game. F Zero X. Now that one was a fun game. This is like the other one that I could actually exchange the card out for uh, Mario Kart because this game's roster was massive. I think in Mario Kart you only had eight drivers uh, back in the original. And uh, so that means seven opponents. And this one you had like, uh, I don't know if it was like 20 or 30, but it was ridiculous. Um, I'm surprised the N64 could actually hold that many AIs and uh, give them all individual intelligence. Mario Golf. I popped this game back in. I remember playing this with my cousin. And uh, trust me, the graphics do not stand well today. For whatever reason, that game did not age well. Road Ash 64, kind of a rare game. Um, I shouldn't say rare. I should just say like uncommon to find these at a good price. Chopper Attack. Wave Race 64. Off-Road Challenge, that game's actually really fun. Another Rareware game, two Rareware games actually here, because we have Donkey Kong, I keep wanting to say country, Donkey Kong 64, and Diddy Kong Racing. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing was a fun racing game too. Um, another game that scared me, because the pig in that game was terrifying for me as a child. I have no idea why. Clay Fighter 63 and one third. This game is worth probably around $500. I'm just kidding. The game that's worth $500 is called Clay Fighter 63 and one third Sculptor's Cut. And for whatever reason, that game, it has like a few more characters I know. It was a blockbuster exclusive. Almost looks exactly the same. Plays the same. But I know that the loose copy of this would go for around $600 and in the box would go for over two grand. So it's ridiculous like how much value there is in this game. The uh, one buddy I know and um, used to live in New Mexico with was, uh, he owns a copy of this game, uh, CIB. So that was really cool um, to touch and feel it up. Supercross 2000, NASCAR 99, Hexen. I shouldn't even be reading these off. They don't even deserve it. Uh, just a bunch of different games. NFL Blitz, I mean, there's a lot of people that used to play that game. NFL was just is huge in the nor in North America, and um, its sales definitely reflected that. Battle Tanks, amazing game. And probably my second favorite game on the entire console is Battle Tanks Global Assault. I really wish 3DO wouldn't have went bankrupt because those games are just... It was so much fun to play with um, a friend or... A family member, like, dude, like I would always play it whenever it was snowing out. And we would just play this game for hours and hours on end and uh, beat the campaign together. I love cooperative campaigns on the old N64 games. Beetle Adventure Racing. Now, this game was an extremely oddball, fun game to play back in the day. If you pop it in now, graphics don't really stand up too well to the, today's standards, but uh, the controls are super tight, and um, I would definitely recommend it to be in your collection because um, a lot of people like playing that game for some reason. Army Men, Sarge's Heroes, another 3 do game, Duke Nukem 64, Banjo-Kazooie, one of the, I'd say one of the favorites for the N64 for a lot of people. I didn't love it that much. I'm not a big fan of collect-a-thon uh, games, but it was definitely fun. I prefer the sequel more. 
Super Smash Brothers, um, not too much to say about this game. I, I, it's hard for me to get excited about these games nowadays because so many people have just flooded the market and just show their appreciation for them. So anything I'm about to say about Super Smash Brothers, you've already heard. Hey, you Pikachu. I think you need a microphone to play that game. I don't know for sure. Gauntlet Legends. This game actually came with a little action figure in certain boxes, and um, nowadays can go for over $100 in the box. Pokemon Stadium 2. Star Fox 64, probably my favorite N64 game of all time. Um, rail shooters, just, I don't know why, they just, it was something that a lot of people liked, the like cheesy one-liners, the voice acting, and uh, turns out it would be my favorite franchise of all time for the N64, Star, Star Fox Adventures being my favorite game of all time. Super Mario 64 was definitely one of the bigger, like, I know it was the first platformer, 3D platformer that uh, Nintendo introduced for the N64. It, this one came with the console. Uh, and it was just, it was such a fun game. If you don't enjoy this game, then uh, you probably don't have a soul, or I don't know what, you're a pedophile. MRC Racing, that label is destroyed. A property of Blockbuster, Mario Tennis, and Yoshi's Story. So, guys, that is my Nintendo 64 collection. I think I missed some on the floor here, but it's not a big deal because they are just sports games. And uh, I'm definitely going to bring in you guys these videos more often. Uh, I love showcasing the collection just to show it off because I don't have a lot of friends in real life. Um, I'm just kidding, but it's just it's fun to show it off and I love the comments the feedback I love going to other people's channels because their collections for N64 blow mine out of the water So guys, I really hope I see you guys in the future and uh, have a great day